Hi, Doc. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Money Mentor Podcast with Chief Economist Dr. Andrew Wilson at My Housing Market. So, plenty to go through again today, Doc, and it's uh, great to have you back again. How are you? How's things been going? Yeah, I'm good, Glenn. And of course, we have uh, another one of our, I guess it's a long weekend for many people coming up this weekend because we have Anzac Day on the Thursday, and I think a lot of people take the Friday off so they can get that uh, that four-day break, um, but it's sort of the last of our holidays for the holiday month of April. We've had school holidays um, in uh, most capital cities or most states on and off over the last uh, two or three weekends or two or three weeks. Um, so I guess after this weekend, we'll settle down and get back to more of a normalised uh, environment, that is without holidays. And the big effect in the housing market, of course, is the auction market. We noticed that uh, with those uh, holiday distractions. We'll look at the latest auction results at the end of uh, the show today. Um, and no surprise, we're seeing some impacts from uh, from those holiday distractions. I think New South Wales started this week um, and Victoria and Queensland are finishing. But um, uh, it is uh, it has been a uh, a big day in the, for the housing market today, Glenn. Um, We've actually just hot off the press. In fact, around about an hour ago, the ABS released the uh, the March uh, inflation numbers, and uh, unfortunately, not good news not good for news. no for the prospects of interest rates. We've had over the last week or so, and I think we mentioned it last week that the US have done a little bit of a, an about face in terms of their attitude to the direction of interest rates going forward this year. Yes. We've been saying that they were perhaps a little bit too optimistic uh, over the last few months in regard to US rate cuts um, and the markets over there, whatever they are, have been predicting, you know, a raft of rate cuts this year while they've gone into reverse gear quite quickly. In fact, uh, some of the markets are now predicting, unfortunately, a rate increase in the US, around about a 30% chance, some of the markets are saying, but that's so different to what uh, the narrative was just a couple of months ago. But, uh, yeah, inflation's raised its ugly head in in uh, in the US. Um, mm. Three months in a row of higher inflation. Uh, retail sales are, are red hot. Um, and, um, uh, you, you know, the labour market over there is, is very, very strong uh, as well. So it's been a... Uh, uh, and we're going to look at the labour market here uh, as well. So it's... Uh, and we're also going to have, interestingly, today, we're going to look at comparing Australia, New Zealand and the US just to show those common elements that are sort of the undercurrent for all uh, our uh, these those major economies or those economies that we're interested in particularly um, and that are really driving the interest rate story because of those, you know, by and large similar uh, underlying drivers. And uh, as I said, we've seen... The US now talking about uh, maybe one, maybe not interest rate cut this year. And um, that's after predicting seven at one stage. Mm. And, uh, you know, the um, as I said, the uh, the uh, some of the chats talking about higher rates, which is a bit of a way off, but uh, still the, uh, the narrative has changed considerably. So we'd better get started. Of course, my housing market presents the data and the insights uh, along with Infinity. We are an independent provider of commentary and um, uh, and data. Uh, we have a number of clients, of course, of which Infinity is one of our very, very special friends. Um, but we're all about the current state and future prospects of housing markets and really about the current state. And hey, isn't that uh, typical of today where we're showing, where we're presenting data hot off the press, which has significant implications for the housing market going forward. So it is the property this week. Ending Wednesday, April the 24th, day before Anzac Day. And we're going to look at the latest uh, labour market data, which is good news, sort of, but not so good news if we're looking to quell demand. Latest inflation data, up again, mm, not so mm. good. And then we're going to have a quick look at those common elements, inflation, building, house prices, uh, migration and inflation uh, between Australia, New Zealand and uh, the US and, of course, as usual, the latest weekend auction results. So 
We'll get started. No surprise, the labour market remains strong despite those higher rates. We've had 13 increases of interest rates since uh, May 2022. It's done nothing to the labour market. It's still chugging along on all eight cylinders, uh, very strong. The latest, um, uh, uh, the latest January data, which was released last week, shows that um, uh, the jobless was slightly higher at 3.8%. Um, which is still very low. Just it follows that previous month's three point seven percent. We we had jobs down seven thousand uh, over the month, and uh, but that followed a one hundred and sixteen thousand surge over January. So we're a little bit down after a lot up the previous month. Similar story with the unemployed numbers. Unemployed were up by seven thousand, but that did follow a, a fifty two thousand fall over the previous month January. The participation rate still near record highs, which reflects the uh, proportion of people in the workforce who could be in the workforce. Uh, Western Australia is now the lowest capital for jobless. Uh, jobless rates in most of the capitals, uh, sorry, the states are um, are a little bit higher than where they were a year ago, but still, you know, quite low, historically low, and do reflect what is a full employment economy. Um, and despite those higher rates and migration, we still have this very low. Uh, jobless rate. And uh, just comparing it to the others, we have um, that unemployment rate in uh, in, New in the US of 3.8% and New Zealand 4%. So there, once again, similar um, underlying factors it, it are very strong economies in the US and the New Zealand, similar to Australia and New Zealand, similar to Australia. Um, and of course, that's what continues to drive demand and that continues to put upward pressure on prices which continues to put upward pressure on uh, um, inflation and interest rates. So another big month um, of uh, results for our labour market. Good news there. Very strong economy. One of the strongest economies we've ever had. Uh, keeps on keeping on with mm. those 3% results. And you can see the, the chart there of the uh, unemployment rate. Uh, ticked up a little bit on trend over the last few months, but still in the threes. Um, and the Reserve Bank, you know, acknowledges this is better than a full employment economy. In other words, it's, you know, we've just got uh, too much um, uh, demand for labour and not enough supply of labour. And, uh, you know, and that's despite, as I said, high migration and also um, uh, uh, high migration and, of course, higher interest rates. So still a very strong economy and um, not good news, really, for those that are looking for, for some relief from interest rates. And as I said, uh, Western mm -hmm. Australia, the top performer there in terms of the unemployment rate, but uh, most of those states, in fact, all those states are still reporting low results. But um, uh, we see there that New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland are tracking a little bit higher than where they were a year ago. And as I said, the, the trend unemployment has eased a little bit, uh, unemployment rate has eased a little bit over the last three or four months, but still very, very low and still clearly, um, in fact, it's it's better than a full employment economy because, you know, we're still mismatched between supply and demand in the labour market going forward. The latest March uh, inflation data released by the ABS, uh, headline inflation increased to 3.5% over March. Uh, that followed a steady 3.4% rate over February. So the, the headline rate um, uh, increased to 3.5%. Um, that's the first increase for a while. Underlying inflation, however, which is the measure that the Reserve Bank uses, um, increased for the second consecutive month, for the second consecutive month to 4%. This is bad news. Uh, two months in a row now with higher mm. underlying inflation. The Reserve Bank uses the underlying inflation rate as their measure, uh, and their target range is 2 to 3%. So we're already ahead of that target uh, significantly, but even worse now, up, up at 4%. Um, no surprise that uh, housing, again, is a significant contributor to inflation, up by 5.2% the annual growth in housing costs uh, compared to 4.6% over the previous month. Uh, food was up 3.5%, uh, similar to the previous month. But the big shift has come in the cost of petrol, of fuel. Uh, Glenn, fuel was up 8.1% uh, over the year to March. And that was up from a 1.4% uh, rise over the previous month, annual rise over the previous month. So petrol, as we've discussed here at length, is, is a big driver. The price of oil is a big pro a driver of inflation. Uh, and that's why we've seen that inflation rate tick up. And um, there's still 
you know, more left, unfortunately, because this is uh, the March data uh, for for fuel and for inflation. And uh, since March, we've seen actually the uh, or over uh, April, we've seen the price of oil increasing mm. even further. So uh, the outlook is not good, but uh, that's a big jump in the price of fuel. And, and as I said, we're going to see perhaps the next month the same sort of outcome. And uh, 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 this is certainly setting the the the, uh, the stage for the Reserve Bank to at least be thinking about higher interest rates because it has to control inflation. Inflation is rising now. The underlying factors are, are rising, particularly fuel and uh, the other bits and pieces, uh, housing, uh, in particular, aren't looking any better, you know, with rents and uh, continuing to rise. So, um, yeah, not good news there for the prospects of interest rates. And, um, you know, we certainly hope there's some downward pressure on the price of oil. But, um, you know, with what's happening in the Middle East, that's probably unlikely uh, over the medium term at least. So uh, latest inflation data, you can see there the breakaway in the inflation chart down and down and down and now we've started to move into reverse and that trend is now starting to rise as i said the reserve bank will be looking very closely at this our inflation rate is at four the underlying inflation rate in the us is 3.8 so very similar there uh however our in, uh, interest rates are uh, more than a percent below the us interest rates official interest rates so um that again is not good news uh, that differential shows that perhaps we should have increased rates a, a little bit more frequently when the US were um, to get a, on, a bit more, you know, on top of inflation, which we're clearly not on top of yet. We can see that relationship. We've shown this chart before between the changes in the price of oil and inflation. You can see how clearly that rise in oil, um, the black line tracks the rise in inflation. So a clear mm -hmm. correlation there. So the interest rate story really is about what's happening with the price of oil to a large degree, as you can see that, uh, um, you know, that uh, inflation tracks the price of oil. And as we've broken out uh, with higher oil prices, we're now starting to uh, see higher inflation. So let's, uh, I said we'd have a look at Oz versus the US versus New Zealand with some factors, some interesting factors. Mm. Uh, we can see there that uh, inflation rates um, have fallen uh, and this is a backward-looking inflation because it's uh, we, we don't have the latest New Zealand data, but you can see there that um, uh, how the uh, uh, inflation rate has fallen with uh, in, in both in New Zealand, Australia, and the US um, uh, downwards there. But uh, uh, we're now starting to see uh, an upward movement in inflation. But you can see how the, the, those uh, we, we track the same as uh, New Zealand and the US. And this is because the factors are the same that's driving inflation, uh, more or less similar. Um, so the US, the latest US uh, data, I mentioned that uh, was higher at 3.5%. That's headline inflation. That followed a 3.2% rise over February. Underlying inflation was unchanged at 38 uh, Fuel and housing accounted for more than half the increase in the US inflation, which is the same as what we're experiencing, fuel mm -hmm. and housing. And underlying the Fed's target is one to three percent, and of course at three point eight percent they're well ahead of that. So that was the latest U.S. inflation data, similar to uh, ours. Now this is the official interest rate comparison between New Zealand, U.S. and Australia. <clears throat> you can see we were sort of tracking uh, in line with the U.S. and New Zealand, and we sort of eased our interest rates a lot earlier than um, than the U.S. and New Zealand, and. Uh, it's that gap now between us and New Zealand and the US, I think, that doesn't spell good news going forward for the prospect of interest rates, because I think that gap is likely to close again, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that's something to no take note of that, uh, you know, we've sort of broken away from the, uh, the US um, uh, relationship with interest rates and our inflation is rising now stronger than the US. So a point to be made. Uh, of course, migration has been part of uh, the story with our economy, particularly demand for housing. Um, and you can see there how Australia's rebound, uh, migration has rebounded since the lockout, the lockdown, the uh, shutdown, whatever you want to call it, through COVID. Uh, big rise there in uh, net annual migration over the year ending September 
last mm -hmm. year. Same story where you look at New Zealand. It too has been driven by uh, demand, particularly for housing with high migration and, of course, demand for goods and services. Uh, so similar pattern there to uh, Australia and the US, of course, which has the highest number of migrants in total of any country. Um, it's also had, a, obviously, a very big surge in migration, tracking well ahead of its previous highs, um, and pre previous recent highs. Um, and, of course, that, of course, is another factor with high demand for housing particularly. So uh, similar migration outcomes. Building approvals, New Zealand, the same as Australia, have seen a collapse in building approvals. We know Australian building approvals have fallen through the roof through since 2016 with the exception of that home builder surge that we had um, uh, at the uh, beginning of, uh, or, or through 2021, 22, uh, as a result of the home builder uh, allowance. But we can see the US as well, um, also falling away with its home building. Of course, that's another factor when we look at falling, uh, building approvals in uh, high demand for housing. Um, we're seeing strong migration and yet we're seeing falling um, falling uh, building approvals. So supply is moving in one direction uh, and demand is moving in the other direction, which is not good to try to be controlling, you know, rents particularly uh, in what are tight rental markets. Mm. Uh, and, and the US, the latest US data, the US was sort of start, starting to say, hey, things are looking a little better for, in building approvals. Um, you can see it improved over the first couple of months of this year, but then there was a very big collapse down 4% over the month. Uh, for building approvals in the US, for, for home building approvals in the US. So uh, it's now heading it back again in that uh, in the wrong direction. And you can see it's trended down over the last couple of years anyway, which again is uh, when it's mismatched with migration is a factor in higher rents, which of course, as we know, is a factor in higher inflation, which is a factor in, yes, higher interest rates. Uh, we saw a big rise in Aussie house prices over March, after the usual quieter start to the year, um, you know, because of seasonal effects, but uh, a big bounce back in March as the market became more fully focused. Uh, similarly, we're seeing this is the Auckland. Uh, these are Auckland house prices. Auckland contributes around about 30 to 40 percent of all housing activity um, transactions in New Zealand. So it's handy to look at Auckland as an example. And you can see that the Auckland market has also bounced back early this year as well. Um, and similarly, US house prices are bouncing back with the latest data there showing uh, a big rise early in the year. So common elements there, uh, demand for housing is rising, not just in the rental market, but also in the buying market as well, which is pushing up prices despite higher interest rates in New Zealand, well, Auckland, um, the US generally, and of course, in Australia. So well, I thought that was pretty pretty uh, interesting uh, relationships. What it shows, um, Glenn, is that what's driving our economy, inflation and interest rates, are these underlying factors. So it's like a systemic problem, um, which isn't going away. It's like, well, well we've got to build more houses. We've got to mm. find more oil. We've got to find more electricity. You know, all these sort of things, which we have these tremendous barriers to doing before we can control inflation, you know. Um, it's not about trying to stop demand. It's really about let's try to increase supply in those areas where we're undersupplied and because of that, we're, we're having prices push up. And that's why the mm. outlook isn't bright because those types of supply constraints are very, very difficult um, to control. So as usual, we'll finish off today, well, nearly finish off today with the latest weekend auction results. Uh, we mentioned, of course, it's uh, middle of school holiday period. Some are just starting, some are just finishing, and it is having an impact on results. So they're a little bit mixed because during school holidays, um, we have fewer numbers of properties auctioned because, of course, people are on holidays and agents want to avoid the, uh, you know, the conflict between people in holiday mode and trying to sell a property. And also, we have a lower proportion or sorry, a lower proportion, yeah, of higher priced properties going under the hammer during school holiday period uh, because, of course, that's sort of the wealth effect with uh, those uh, that are a little bit better off having the holidays uh, and uh, and that's why we see that higher proportion of lower priced properties in the market. But um, even though listings were down, obviously, in Sydney because of the first week of school holidays, there's still, this is the trend we've had, Glenn, this year, 
We've had mm. a real surge in listings, auction listings. Uh, vendors, sellers are really confident about the market. Um, they're happy to test the market. We've seen actually record numbers of, uh, of uh, properties going under the hammer uh, for this time of the year, over the first four months of the year. Uh, Sydney was down compared to the previous weekend, of course, because they were not going on holidays, but they're still well above where they were a year ago. And, of course, the clearance rate was affected uh, by the, uh, the holiday market in Sydney uh, with its lowest result for the year, 66.6%, but nonetheless a good result for a holiday market. Uh, Melbourne now coming back from holidays, uh, 800 auctions, uh, still some some parts of Melbourne in, in, on holidays, but uh, Melbourne, uh, 800 auctions. And, of course, we have the long weekend, which is a distraction as well with that Anzac Day holiday. So 800 auctions, similar to the weekend before. But again, Glenn, well above where it was uh, the same mm. weekend last year. And um, <clears throat> the clearance rate was actually higher in Melbourne, which is quite a positive sign, um, uh, pushing up towards 70%. Uh, Brisbane, again, uh, higher numbers there from the previous weekend, uh, 94 auctions, but well ahead of the same weekend last year with 48. Um, Adelaide, uh, big numbers of auctions, uh, auction clearance rate down slightly, um, well, down, but still quite uh, strong there for sellers with nearly 80%. Uh, and Canberra produced its best uh, clearance rate for some time. We've been saying that Canberra market is looking like it's uh, starting to pick up, showing signs of picking up after a subdued year last year. So, uh, your holiday market, we're sort of back in town. Uh, well, not really, because we've got the Anzac Day log weekend this weekend. So, it'll really be another week or two before we get the full market. But certainly, there's no doubt how strong our markets have been in terms of supply of properties. And clearance rates are holding up. And we'll look at the number of sales at the end of our auction report here today, as usual. So, you can see there, um, our clearance rates in Sydney now... <coughs> are now just a little bit lower than where they were a year ago. Of course, uh, we were heading into the strong part of the year a year ago when that uh, unleashing of pent-up demand from that quiet 2022 was, was upon our markets. So we're going to see clearance rates lower than where they were a year ago over the next few months, but that was a very, very strong... In fact, it was a boom period um, last year as that pent-up demand was released. So uh, Sydney clearance rates so far over April, a little bit down on uh, the same month last year. Same story there in Melbourne, although Melbourne clearance rates are just starting to track up a little bit higher um, than in March. So we've said that Melbourne's maybe a bit of a special this year to uh, to start to, to uh, reflect the sort of growth we've had in some of the other capitals, such as uh, Sydney, Adelaide, Perth and Brisbane. Um, Brisbane's around about the same, a little bit lower than a year ago. I keep saying a year ago was a very strong market, particularly in Brisbane, so no surprise we're not matching that at the moment. Um, Adelaide, similar story, a little bit lower, but still strong results in Adelaide. And, uh, yeah, that Canberra market certainly looking uh, quite uh, positive compared to the results it had over the end of last year. So uh, some value there in that Canberra market going forward. Uh, you can get the latest auction clearance rates for the capital cities every Saturday night on my LinkedIn site at about 6.30. And the full national report is available on that site on Sunday at 9 o'clock, which includes uh, the Sydney and Melbourne regional breakdowns, as well as the top 10 sales for each of the capital cities under the hammer on that Saturday. So look out for that one. As I mentioned, we have had record auction activity, not just listings, but actual sales. So when we put the... Uh, clearance rate together with the listings. These are the number of sales we've had uh, so, so far this year compared to the same period last year. And look at that, Glenn. Sydney up 40% uh, more sales compared to the same time last year. Melbourne 20% up. Brisbane 26% up. Um, Adelaide up 4%. Canberra still tracking lower than a year ago, up four uh, down 4%. But look, mm. that's really good news for estate agents who'll be counting the commission because prices are higher as well. Um, but lots of sales happening and uh, governments that have stamp duty will also be happy with the stamp duty that that would be generating. So, again, it's been a, a very positive start to the year uh, with our auction markets. And if you want to get a copy of that latest weekend auction market report, there is the QR code for it. So, uh, and there's the data to get those, uh, to get the latest reports of a Saturday. So, My Housing Market and Infinity produce an app. Uh, there is a link to that app, our uh, our housing market app. Uh, you'll need a password, which you can get through Infinity to access that app. 
but it does give you all the latest asking prices and asking rents for every suburb in Australia that has data. It's updated daily and it has lots of information on it that's great for those that are uh, interested in the market or just want to know what's happening in their neighbourhood in, in uh, the sense of rents and prices. Here's a screenshot um, of the app. Uh, you can see there we can filter it for price or rent. Uh, we've filtered that for price. Uh, you can filter it for regions uh, outside the capital or the capital region. We've looked at the uh, Sydney region there. We've then uh, picked our suburb, which is Blacktown, big suburb. You can then filter it for the type of property, a house, a unit, or a townhouse. And you can also filter it for the number of beds. And we've filtered that there for a five-bedroom house in Blacktown. And there are our results. We have the median price, the high price, and the low price currently, um, as well as the number of listings. So that's a, a pretty uh, comprehensive insight into real time what's happening, what people, uh, what the market is asking for its product um, on a suburb by suburb basis. And it's not just the median, it's the high, the low. And you can also see how many properties are actually for sale there at the moment. And we have exactly the same there for the rental market, Glenn. So you can do the same thing for uh, for rents as we can for prices on these suburbs. That's a handy little insight in real time into what's happening in the housing market, uh, what the energy is currently. So get a hold of that one, but you'll have to get the password from our friends at Infinity. So next week, we'll have the latest national house and unit prices for April. Uh, yes, April is next week. I mean, May mm. is next week. So uh, there goes another month. We also have yep. the latest re retail sales. Um, and uh, it'd be interesting to see results there because, uh, as I mentioned, with the US, they had a very strong retail number uh, with their latest data. Will we follow them? Uh, of course, that's a, again, if people are spending at high levels, it's not a good sign to try to get interest rates lower. Uh, we're also going to look at the top auction suburbs and regions, which we did last month to see which are the top auction suburbs over the month. Uh, or we'll do it over the year so far. Uh, in each of our capital city markets. So we'll look at who are the, what are the top auction suburbs for clearance rates um, and also the top regions in each of the capitals so far this year. And we'll look as usual as the latest weekend auction results, which again will likely be impeded by uh, the Anzac Day long weekend holiday. But we'll wait and see those results. So uh, that's the report, today's report, Glenn, that can be downloaded there on that QR code. Um, so we've had another big week in property uh, as usual. And I look forward to those latest price, uh, that latest price data uh, mm -hmm. that we will reveal uh, exclusively next week uh, on the podcast. So uh, look out for that one. Beautiful, Doc. So that's us for the week. Enjoy your Anzac Day break. Glenn, are you having one? Yeah, absolutely, Doc. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be enjoying the, the break and uh, back on deck on, on the Friday. So... No long Friday. weekend, but yeah, looking forward to to the break. So, okay, Matt. Well, uh, uh, if I see you next week, I'll see you next week. But uh, wonderful, Doc. We'll uh, we'll look forward to another big week in property. So, uh, see you later, everyone. Always good. See you later, Doc. Bye.